Well, hello and welcome to Wild Vittles. So, today, we're going not to cook something. And it's not often that I do that. When, generally, when I'm, when I'm uh, starting these off, I'm already like neck deep in a recipe and, I, and I'm hurrying to get on to the next thing because I'm trying to hurry up and get something done. You know, I've been doing this six months and I need a break. And so I want to try something a little bit different. We've done some interviews and something that I, I said I was going to do. And now I think I'm ready to do it is to do some cookbook reviews because as, as important as it is to, I mean, you know, do, I think cooking demonstrations and conversations through that and to talk to authors, I also want to talk about their works. And so I've had this idea, I've been thinking about it. And so today I'm just kind of setting it up as to what's going to come. So this will be a kind of a brief update because uh, I'm not really ready uh, today to do a full review. I want to, I really want to dig in and give you a fulsome review. It's going to give me an excuse probably to expand my library. My library of cookbooks is, is pretty huge already, but you know, um, I'm going to hit some of the things that I've already got. I want to share uh, some of the individuals that have made a huge impact on my ability uh, to successfully cook wild game and have expanded my horizons. I'm also, you know, I'm not going to throw rocks, but I'm going to tell you that there's some that really didn't help. I, I've, I've bought some cookbooks that looked pretty, but were not much help. And so I've been thinking about, I've made a kind of a listing myself here of, of what I think the aspects are that we ought to do. And so this is going to be on a five point scale and I've got different aspects that we're going to, we're going to judge each of these by first one being usefulness. And so what do I mean by that? Sometimes I have cookbooks that I have on both extremes. I have cookbooks that, man, I am going to that cookbook all the time to reference things. Um, and, and it's just really applicable to my life. Now, let me also say, this is my opinion and probably a reflection of the aspects from my point of view. I, I'm a Western hunter as well as a whitetail hunter. I also live close to the Texas coast and do a lot of saltwater fishing. So you can kind of mix that in waterfowl hunter, um, whitetail, elk, antelope, um, ducks, and all kinds of fish, you know, so these things appeal to me may not appeal to somebody that is a, maybe a specialist in a certain area, but still usefulness. How often do I use it? Um, how, is it something I go to all the time or is it something that really isn't very closely related to that um, practicality? So not only is it useful, but is it practical? And you know, Sometimes practical can be boring, but what I'd say is it has to do with utility. So these two, you could argue with me that maybe those are the same thing. I would argue that there is a, a slight difference between the two, but they are very interrelated. Um, scalability, that's a very corporate term. What do I mean by that? In today's age, you don't just put out a book. There's social media, there is the internet. And many of the successful uh, cookbook, especially in the wild game section that I'm aware of, cookbook authors also have a vast library out on the internet. And really a lot of the good ones, it's free. Um, also then the other aspect is uh, YouTube, so videos. So how prolific, how widespread, how it goes with, with practicality and usefulness, but scalability, can I only find the resources in that book or can I go and find it anywhere else? And how useful is that? And, and so this is something, again, is a reflection of my use when I'm trying a, a recipe, I like to go out and look at a video in addition to just reading that uh, recipe itself, because sometimes words mean different things to different people or the way that it's conveyed to somebody may not necessarily paint a picture. It sure as hell doesn't do it the way that a video does. So from that perspective, I think that's very important. And then the last one is aesthetics. Not 
probably hugely important, but some of these books are just beautiful and they tell a great story, fantastic photography. And I will tell you that I have some that are extremely useful. I use all the time and they're just not very aesthetically pleasing because the author didn't really have the funds, I don't think, to make a glossy coffee table book. I have some glossy coffee table book cookbooks that really aren't worth a damn. So, but I thought I should include it because there's a lot of effort. So each of those I'll, I'll rank on a five point scale and then I'll average all of those together on an equal weighting. At least right now, I think it'll be an equal weighting and that'll give me an overall score. And then I'm going to kind of add on as a bonus feature, what are my favorite things? And I will be able to find a favorite thing about each of the cookbooks. You know, some of these, you know, like I'm going to do Hank Shaw um, and I'm going to look at each of his, his cookbooks, which is at first I thought, well, it just will be Hank Shaw as a resource, but no, I'm going to do the cookbooks. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to include the first one um, is I'm going to do Buck Buck Moose. And I'm starting with Hank Shaw. You know why I'm doing, starting with him? Because I have tremendous respect for him. And I think he's going to be the standard to beat. Because he meets a lot of the criteria. Extremely useful. Very practical. Beautiful book. Beautiful. Very scalable. Has tremendous amount of resources out there. So you know, that's going to be a pretty easy one. Some of them, you know, that, you know, that I think, you know, I'm going to look at uh, Steve Ranella's outdoor cookbook. This is the, the one for like, what is it? It's over the campfire. This is the grill smoker camp stove and campfire. And we'll talk a little bit about that because there were some things about this that I, how it kind of made me pause and I want to talk about those things. Now, these people are wildly successful and famous and I am not. So take it with a grain of salt, but I'm just an average man trying to make my way in the world and to try to make some good ball game uh, meals along the way. So, so I hope everybody is having um, a great summer here. As I record this, we've just finished up um, with 4th of July last week. There's a hurricane bearing down on the Texas coast. Um, so we're kind of battening down the hatches for that. I have made quite a few meals. Um, I make, I make wild game meals probably three to five a week at least. And I've been doing that, but I must tell you the the video editing, the editing, the setting all up all the equipment sometimes get in the ways gets in the way of life. And we've had some company over, and I just didn't have really. I would say that I had the time. I just didn't have the energy to do it this week, which I think has spawned something that I hope will be interesting. So. If you're interested in um, hearing about a certain kind of cookbook or have a question um, about uh, ball game cooking, I would really appreciate it if you would reach out. And I should say that um, I even have, I have an email um, set up specific for wild vittles and I will bring that up. You know, you think if I was um, planning ahead, I would have already written this out so I'd know it, but it's wild Vittles podcast at gmail.com. And that's all one world of word, of course. And in case you didn't know, or you're listening and you're not looking at the, at, you know, the podcast title, Vittles is spelled, um, V I T T L E S. So wild Vittles podcast at gmail.com. Send me ideas, send me questions. I would really appreciate it. Uh, I think, you know, Another thing too is, is what I'm, I'm looking at the feedback from the perspective of downloads and views. And I can tell that I think the deer uh, recipes are more popular than the fish recipes. And I'm, I'm not sure if it's that or if it's because it's summertime. I'm working also on um, lining up a few more interviews. Uh, I've been corresponding with Becca Garris and we, she agreed to come on and we talked about a date and then we've kind of lost contact somehow. But She's a very busy person and a mother of, of two and very busy. So I don't falter for that. I'm also, um, it, we will get in touch and I'm sure we'll be able to do it. Um, also Christy, um, Carpentry with, um, Nevada foodies, one of my favorite 
I think Unsung Heroes out there that's a really, really great wall game chef and just really spreads a lot of beautiful ideas. And, and I mean, I'm making another one of her dishes tomorrow night. It's probably between her and Hank Shaw. Those are the ones I use probably the most. So still trying to get a hold of her. We did um, initially um, try to set an appointment, but um, she had um, some things going on in, in her life. And I just said, let's, let's take a pause and let's wait and, and regroup. And um, because I don't want, ever want this to be a burden on anybody because this is for fun. And as I bring up this um, cookbook discussion, I'm excited about it. Um, I was getting a little bit, you know, when you start to feel like it's work on the, the cooking episodes, I was like, let's, let's change this up. So I hope it's something that you'll like. I um, very much appreciate uh, you tuning in and listening, and I very much would appreciate your questions and interaction. Please do subscribe on the YouTube, and please do um, subscribe. And if you could leave a five-star review on the podcast, I would be in your debt. I appreciate it. So, like I said, a very quick update of what's to come. And I am in research mode from this point forward. So again, I hope you all are, are having a great summer. Yeah, if you're listening to this, you know, on a current basis, I hope that you're working your way through your uh, wild game reserves in your freezer. I know I am. I'm quite happy with the progress of where I am, what I have left. Um, and going into hunting season, significant amount of room in my freezer. So that's a victory from the perspective of utilization. So with that, I will sign off for the evening. Thank you again for your time. Please do tune in as we talk about these cookbooks. And until next time, here's to you becoming a better, a better wild game chef. And good night and good luck. Thank you. I want you to know it's over.